My job is too important. I cannot come down. Whew. Let's keep talking about the cross. Sitting back in my office this morning, spending some time with the Lord, and talk about this topic today. To be remembered. Think about that. To be remembered. Now before, before Nathan switches it, I want you to think. As you think about the scriptures that you know in the Bible that pertain to the cross, which one is this? To be remembered. When it pertains to the cross. Now think about it. Who is that? It's thief on the cross. Jesus what? Remember me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I thought about the thieves on the cross all week. Can't get them out of my head. Can't get them out of my heart. To be remembered. I'm sitting back there this morning, and I'm looking at this next slide. Go ahead, Nathan. <clears throat> I just want you to look at those two sentences. Just take some time. I've looked at them all week. Just take some time and look at those two sentences. I wrote them down. They're in your bulletin this morning in my sermon notes. You can think about them all week yourself. But I want you to look at those, and I want you to think about what just happened in this room. Because whether we're talking about chains or boxes or crosses, it's the same message. To come down from the cross <clears throat> is to choose immersion in the world. You saw a video with a, a young lady pulling off paper from the front of books and, and seeing the name of Jesus. If she doesn't pull the paper off, she's attempted to come down from the cross. But to pull the paper is to stay on the cross, right? To come down from the cross is to choose immersion in the world. To remain crucified with Christ is to surrender to communion with God and God's children. Now think about that. To remain crucified with Christ is to surrender to communion with God. Think about those two words. Immersion communion drive through town are you immersed or communing because both are going on most are immersed don't even realize who they are or what they are about whether you're a kid walking a street or an adult driving the car most don't know who they are who God's made them to be how much he loves them that's why you cry that's why you keep singing because you go, maybe that's true. Maybe he does love me. Maybe he does want to have communion with me. Maybe it's more than just bread and juice. Maybe he really is for me. To come down from the cross is to choose immersion in the world. To remain crucified with Christ is to surrender to communion with God and God's children. What did the thief on the cross say? Jesus remember me Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and Jesus said to him truly I say to you today you shall be with me in paradise Jesus remember me remember me when you show up in heaven someday at the gates and you're looking in there and Jesus is standing five feet across from you will you have to say you remember me? See, this life is about the remembrance. Before we ever get there, I'm asking you, God, to remember me. And Jesus will look at you. If you say that here, if you say that here, Jesus is going to say, oh, I'll remember you. Not only will I remember you, I'll know you more intimately than you know yourself. This life 
is a crucifixion next to Christ from which we must not come down. Think about Nehemiah's words on a wall. My job is too important. I cannot come down. This life is a crucifixion next to Christ from which we must not come down. We must allow guilt to be crucified and Jesus' innocence to come alive in us if we are to be remembered in paradise. That's what I want to talk about today. Let's jump into this. A life of crucifixion from which we must not come down. The week before Jesus dies, <clears throat> there are some Gentiles, some non-Jews, who have found their way into Jerusalem, and they find some of the disciples, a couple of them, and say, listen, we, we've come a long way. Is there any way we can see Jesus? And the disciple that these Gentiles came to goes to another disciple and says to him, I got some guys outside who want to see Jesus. Is there any way you can go in and ask Jesus to see if that's possible? And so that disciple goes into where Jesus is, and he says to Jesus, Hey, a disciple just came to me and said to me that he saw two guys who aren't Jewish, they're Gentiles, who want to see you. They've come a long way to see you. And Jesus doesn't even acknowledge the request directly. But what he does is he speaks to these Jewish disciples concerning their lives and the lives of the Gentiles who have come to see him. And in so doing, he includes the entire world. Jesus states in this verse from John 12, 31 and 32, the entire purpose and, and reality of his life in this world. Now judgment is upon the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. That was so then, and it is so now. Judgment still is upon this world. And in one sense, the enemy has been cast out. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, the enemy was cast out. But for a season, he's allowed to remain. Wheat and tares are growing up together. And one day, the harvest will come. So there'll be another kind of casting out of the enemy. Such is the reason why I say all of our lives, my life, your life, every life, this life is a crucifixion. Now watch what Jesus says here. We've ever, all of us have heard that phrase, it ain't if, it's when. It's interesting how this sentence comes forth. And I, notice Jesus says if about his life. See, the when of our life, the when, W-H-E-N, because we don't have an option. It ain't if, it's when with all of us. It wasn't a when with Jesus. See, that's the victory of Messiah. He overcame the if and made the if a reality. Watch this. If I am lifted up from the earth, let this cup pass from me, yet nevertheless, if, I'm going to keep going. You can go ahead and beat me, I'm not going to open my mouth. You can shove the crown of thorns down on my head, and even though I still want to push that cup away in my flesh, no, no, no. This ain't about if for me, because I see your win. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to stay up on this cross so that the if goes away, and it is set in stone. It is finished. His if became a reality, and in his reality, all of our ifs went away. You're on a cross, folks. You better realize it. You are on a cross. And the choice is to stay up there with him 
or to convince yourself that coming down is better when you just remain on a cross, up or down, you're still on a cross. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. So have you. So have you. So have you. All of us are up there. But which thief will you be? I've been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In that declaration, we see which thief Paul is. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. He fulfilled the if, and he stuck me up there with him. And he said, which thief will you be? Will you be the one crucified beside me? Or the one who just keeps crying to come down? Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. It is a slow death, isn't it? You hear what I said? It is a slow death. You sung a song, I think it was last week, Jesus, you're beautiful. When I gave you my heart, I thought I gave it all to you. <laughs> Crucifixion is a slow death. Today, we are going to immerse people and say, you have been immersed in the world for all this time. Rise to communion with the king. And when they do, they will acknowledge that they are crucifying the flesh with its passions and desires. Jesus died within six hours. For most people, it took weeks and weeks. It takes time. Just because you declare that you give your heart to Jesus doesn't mean you are perfect. It takes time. It's difficult to stay on the cross next to him. Up or down, you're still on a cross. Will you be crucified beside him? Let's keep going. Within each person's crucifixion, there are conflicting calls to come down from the cross and join the world or to be crucified with Christ. Now that's present in both of the statements from both of the men. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuses at Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. My question is, saved to what? Saved to what? If Jesus said, Okay, that's a good idea. Let's come down. Do you think the criminal who wanted to come down wanted to be with the Jesus who was up there in the first place. He didn't. Because if he wanted to come down to be with the Jesus who was up there in the first place, he wouldn't have asked to come down. Do you see what I'm saying? He didn't want to come down to walk with Christ. He wanted to come, back, come down to walk back to his old life. Which Jesus do you want to be hung by? Which Jesus do you want to walk this world with? There's only one Jesus you can walk this world with. And it isn't the simply moral teacher. To walk this world with Christ, we have to be crucified with him. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Do you not even fear God? Since you're under the same sentence of condemnation, I'm on a cross, he's on a cross, you're on a cross. We're all on a cross here. And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve. Do you see the admission of guilt? <clears throat> Isn't that what we're doing in here? The people that are going into this tub today are acknowledging the guilt of their lives. And the only thing that can cleanse it is the innocence of Christ. Can you see guilt and innocence? And what this second thief is saying, do you not even fear God? 
you are crucified just like me, just like him. Your problem is you don't think you have a right to be up here. You deserve it. So we better acknowledge where guilt lies and where innocence lies and stop playing this come down game. For we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds, our guilt. But this man has done nothing wrong, his innocence. All week I thought about this next thing. To remain crucified or to come down. If you desire not to be crucified with Christ, what is it exactly you are coming down from your cross to be, to do? With whom are you desiring to walk? What are you wanting to do that you can't do if you are crucified next to Jesus? Because he's not coming down. If I'm lifted up, and he was, and opened not his mouth, he never, what do you want to come down to? What life are you desiring to live that he's not allowing you to live? If Jesus would have jumped off of the temple when Satan said, come on down from here. Show the world that you're the, you don't have to go to that old cross. Just jump off the building. The angels will swoop down and save you and the whole world will go, oh, the Messiah, the Son of God. Just jump off. Jesus said, no, I'm not coming down. I'm living the Father's will. That is my life. Peter, knee-deep in fish, said to Jesus, I am a sinful man. Just take me off this cross. You're desiring for me to hang on beside you. Just go your way. Just go your way. And let me go back to my life of fishing. And Jesus said, I will not. I will not give up on you. Get up out of that fish. Live your life beside me. Declare to the world that you're crucified with me. And don't come down. Jesus stopped at the tree that Zacchaeus climbed up. <clears throat> and said, come down from there because I'd like to have dinner at your house today. And when Zacchaeus came down and everybody looked at him, he had a choice to stay on the cross that he came down to or to walk away from the cross and back into that old life immersed in the world. The rich young ruler looked Jesus in the eyes and he said, I, I, just, I don't get it. I'm innocent. I've done every single thing. <laughs> and Jesus said, it's interesting that you call me good. Only God is good. Who is really innocent? I'm telling you, it's only God. He couldn't come to grips with his own guilt and the exclusive innocence of the Lord our God. And when Jesus said, would you like to hang on a cross next to me? The rich young ruler said, no, I'd rather come down. And he walked away sorrowfully because he knew what Jesus was telling him was the right thing. There are people who walk out of local congregations every single week because they've lived a life of morality and deep down they know that crucifixion with Christ is the right thing but they prefer immersion with the world. I'll just immerse myself in the world and I will be more moral than all of them and hopefully my good will be good enough when I stand in front of God. And Jesus says, I only remember those who are crucified with me. If you've seen the passion of the Christ, when Barabbas is brought out there before that crowd, Mel Gibson did a great job. He made him look like a gluttonous fool. And the world cries for gluttonous fools. 
to join them. But did you see the Red Sea part after Annas and Caiaphas stirred up the crowd and said, no, we don't want Jesus. Give us Barabbas. And Barabbas walks down the steps and sticks his tongue out 50 times. Ah, ah, as he walks down the steps. The people didn't want Barabbas. It parted. And Barabbas walked straight through all of them. Not with an embrace. But nobody touched him. He walked straight back into his own life. The world will call your name. But when you are among them, there is no communal embrace. They stick your head underwater and kill you till you die. That is a fact. When Judas hung himself on a tree, not provided by Jesus, he chose a different cross, and he came down from it, and he blew up in a valley below. There are hundreds of people that will be here today who will be issued this same call. All of us have crosses that Jesus has given us. And all of us will decide whether or not we're coming down or not. And I'm telling you, you'll never come down. Will you be settled with the cross you've been given? Because the only settling is the admission of guilt and the look to Jesus' innocence. And when you settle on those two things, do you know where you find yourself? even before you expire. Paradise. To come down is to immerse oneself in the dying world. I want you to see the incarnation in this statement. We've already started planning for Advent. Advent is the incarnation. Life was born into death so life could die into death and lead death to life. That's the incarnation. Innocence descended into humanity's guilt. Jesus came down. He descended into humanity's guilt in order to be, what, lifted up on a crucifying cross. He didn't have to. But he did, because he loved us. He descended into us and lifted all of us up, or lifted himself up. And in so doing, all of us got lifted up. Not just those who are saved. Everybody else got lifted up too when he did what he did. He descended and was lifted, and in so doing, all of us became lifted too. And there we hang. There we hang beside him. I considered preaching this entire sermon standing up on a stool with my arms outstretched. There you hang, and it's on each communal cross where personal guilt is acknowledged and innocence is to be graciously received. Many a person will hang there and go, just get me down. What about your guilt? Just get me down. Just get me down. What about his innocence? Just get me down. Just get me down. I want, put me down. Like a baby. Put me down. I don't want to be held by you. Put me down. Put your arms from around me. Put me down. Recognize the guilt. Listen, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I was so angry Thursday afternoon. Thank God for Pastor James. He just listened to me for a while. He just took it. He stood as the person of Christ and took all of my anger as he hung on that cross. I'm a guilty person. I say things to my family all the time that I shouldn't say. I spend time by myself when I should be with them. I spend time with them when I should be by myself. You do it too. 
Come on now. You're not a murderer, but you're guilty. Come on, we're all guilty. It doesn't mean God loves us any less. He doesn't. He loves us. That's why he died for us. Acknowledge your guilt. Look to his innocence. It's the only way you're ever going to be remembered. Immersion in the world is a crucifixion that ends in death. Communion with the innocent, crucified Christ results in life. Just one last thing. Despite the world's cries, Jesus refused to come down. Four questions as we prepare to make a move. And back in the day, preachers would pound on pulpits and scream and yell, and I've done that too, and beg for people to come forward. Folks, I, I can't raise the volume of my voice and convince you. <laughs> I've tried. I'm telling you, it doesn't work. I have screamed more sermons in my life trying to, please, I'm begging you to believe me. I'm just telling you this is the way it is. It's the way it is. And sometimes I get excited, and I think that's fine. I mean, when you're excited about something, you should raise your voice, you know? I mean, you know how many times I've raised my voice for this guy, and it wasn't even about Jesus. <laughs> He's just a good runner of the football, <laughs> you know? Or running down the field screaming for my own kid, you know? Or standing on high street and cheering for my boys, you know? But listen, I'm not going to yell at you. You know what I'm telling you is true. You know what I'm telling you is true. And so when we get ready to take this beautiful meal of sacrifice, you have to decide, will you stay on the cross and stop asking Jesus to get you down? Hang there with him. Will you submit to crucifixion or attempt to come down? Crucified, will you acknowledge your guilt? crucified will you call to innocence to be remembered crucified will you find yourself remembered in paradise that's the call let's pray oh lord that 700 people would line up at that tank over there today <laughs> Oh, Lord, I've been baptized in you just as you commanded me to. I've been declaring for generations that I'm guilty. I am God. I'm guilty. I deserve the cross you've given me. You welcome the one you were given. And as we all just hang here, just hanging, we have a choice to make. Acknowledgement of guilt and a look towards innocence that cries out, remember me. Or a denial of all of those things that says, could I just come down, please, and get back to my own life? God, I know these people would not be in this room right now if they weren't thinking about it. Oh, yeah, I'm guessing we all show up sometimes just because the car brings us here. I've done that a number of times myself. But I'm thinking, Lord, in this moment that even if a car just kind of turned its way into 540 Fairmont Road, people know now, you know what? What God has said today is right. What he said in songs and what he said in Pastor Daniel's prayers, what he said in that video, what he said in the sermon, what he said, it's right. And Jesus, now we have to decide. 
whether people say it or don't say it, some will say, I'm just walking back to my own life. But I know, I know that many a person, and I'm praying God all, stand and say, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And you don't want me to live in that guilt anymore. So I'm looking to your innocence, Jesus. Because I don't want to live in my guilt. I want to live in your paradise. Mm, God. Isn't that why you gave us your body, Jesus? Because <laughs> you acknowledged our guilt and said, you know what? I'm going to give my body for your guilt. <laughs> you said that in innocence, Lord. And you said, in my innocence, I'm going to pour out my innocent blood on your guilt. And as I do, if you will acknowledge your guilt and eat my innocent body and drink my innocent blood, you will remain crucified with me in this life. But your life won't be defined ultimately by crucifixion. Ultimately, because of me, your life will be defined by paradise. And paradise isn't a place. Paradise is a person. When we acknowledge our guilt and your innocence, Jesus, we realize that we have paradise in the person of you. Mm. God. These bearers of gifts, as they go to either side of the room now, I pray that every single person in this room says, I acknowledge my guilt. I acknowledge your innocence, Jesus. Will you bring me to the place which is the person of paradise? And that paradise is you, Jesus Messiah. We love you, God. We give you praise. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. Would you make that choice today? If you make that choice, communion is absolutely available to you. If you'd like to kneel first and just say those words to Jesus, say them. If you say, I, I don't have the strength to say the words, I need somebody to help me pray. Walk over here, Don, Daniel. Others, they'll pray with you. Just move. Stay on your cross by moving towards Christ. Take the time. He's given it to you.